Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. I've been making a 2D adventure called The Dreadful Whispers for roughly six months now. It's a game about overcoming fear, full of puzzles, action, an interesting story, and lots of extremely quirky NPCs. Gods and gods. <laughs> I've been making this game completely on my own using Unity. I program the gameplay, interactions, mechanics with C Sharp and draw characters, monsters, and environment pieces in Photoshop. So yeah, I'm one dude doing everything except the music, which is being made by Dave Allen. It's been half a year of pretty intense work, but I'm getting closer and closer to completing the game and releasing it on Steam. So with my nice summer holiday break over, it's time for a recap of this whole journey so far. In this video, I'll give you an overview of how this game project started and how it evolved over time talking about the main things I learned along the way. So it all started during the Christmas holidays. I prototyped an interesting puzzle platformer using basic shapes. I almost always use ugly, simple assets to test game ideas. That way I haven't wasted tons of time making beautiful art, music, and super clean codes for a game that isn't even any good. Anyway, turns out I really liked the prototype and felt like there was a ton of potential. In short, one player would control two characters, one white, the other black. The white character is only affected by anything that is white in the scene, whereas the black character is affected by everything that is black. So if the white character tried jumping on a black platform, for example, he would fall right through it. And then there's the gold color, which affects both the white and black character. With the core gameplay set up, I then spent a couple weeks designing levels and dreaming up a story and world which the game could take place in. This was one of the first puzzle games I've ever made, so designing levels was tricky but lots of fun. In January 2019, it was time to start making some art. The colors black, white, and gold being very important parts of the gameplay, initially the levels were mostly made up of only those colors. I was going for a winter foggy world, maybe because it was pretty cold and dark that January, but also because a darker atmosphere fitted the game's story about confronting inner demons and overcoming them. It was also very important for me to keep the art simple. Again, I'm in charge of almost everything with this project, so making hyper-realistic, ultra-detailed artwork on top of programming and designing would have taken me a century. During this initial period, I would constantly prototype levels with ugly shapes, and only if they were good and interesting would I spend time making art. I realized at this point that it's okay to reuse certain assets more than once. I can duplicate a tree several times and the world will still look fine, instead of going insane drawing a slightly different tree hundreds of times. Don't be a perfectionist, you'll never get stuff done. So around the end of January, I worked on a new, interesting mechanic. This one lets players reveal a second side to the world, one that hides spooky monsters, secrets, and traps. This mechanic was inspired by a small game prototype I made last Halloween. I really wanted to expand on it and felt like it would fit very nicely with the game's story. Clearly, the project was growing in scope. What started as a small puzzle platformer was turning into something quite different, more heavily focused on story and weird mechanics than complex puzzles. My motivation on the project was pretty low at this point though. I'd made dozens and dozens of levels, most were filled with bugs and some were still made up of prototype squares. Being used to finishing games during game jams, so in a weekend or seven days, the endless time at my disposal with the dreadful whispers was a bit overwhelming and I lacked a lot of patience. I wanted the game to look, feel, sound and play great right away. Instead I had a limp, broken toy which would need months of work before ever seeing the light of day. I learned that patience is key. If you don't give up during these inevitable low points, things will improve. And of course, I was running a devlog video series. Having an audience that was aware I was making this game stopped me from just quitting the project on the sly. So make yourself accountable and go tell your family, friends, social media followers that you're making a game. You'll think twice before giving up that way. After this low point, I went on holiday, got the flu, and hosted my own game jam. So I hardly made any progress on the Dreadful Whispers during the month of February. Getting back into it in March was pretty tough. Oh, how I just wanted to start something new and fresh. But instead, I gripped my teeth and continued making levels and arts for the game. To tell the story, I also wanted to have animated cutscenes. 
so many days were spent on that, making MP4 videos with art and animations using Camtasia Studio 9, and then importing those video files inside of Unity and getting them to play in-game with the video player component. At this point, the game was going to be small and free to play on itch.io and Newgrounds, but later on during the month of March, my motivation for the project began to skyrocket, and I felt like selling the Dreadful Whispers for a few dollars would be a very interesting experience. Many developers are extremely motivated at the start, and tend to lose it as time goes on, due to bugs appearing and the game not seeming as cool as it sounded on paper anymore. But in this case, the more I worked on my game, the more excited and motivated I got. Motivation can really come with momentum, and it's incredible how much more productive one can get when his heart is really invested in the project. Around the time I decided the game wouldn't be free, I reworked on the game's visuals. Colours felt very washed out and a bit bland and boring, so I spent many days tweaking colours, making that limp red into something fierce and interesting. I also began work on particle effects to add more movement to each scene. I went a bit over the top with that initially, but thanks to feedback from the community, I calmed down with my particles. So yes, feedback. It has been such an important and helpful thing for me. It really is quite scary to show your game to friends or strangers and potentially have your hard work completely bashed. But it's necessary, especially when working alone or in a tiny team. It's easy to go insane and make something only you think is cool. By getting feedback, you can improve your work and fix things you might never have noticed. It was also during the month of March that Dave joins the team to help me with the game's music. He's been doing a fantastic job. I would describe what I wanted for a certain part of the game, and he would do the rest. The music he made definitely brought the world to life. And of course, the knowledge that I wasn't completely alone on the project anymore was very motivating. For my next larger game, I will almost certainly collaborate with a programmer as well. I was working almost solo, except for Dave, who isn't full-time on the job, though there's an amazing sense of creative freedom, it's still a pretty lonely and at times stressful endeavour. Progress can be slow and there's no one to bounce ideas off, or have fun, or share moments of failure and success with, and that is as invested in the project as you. Anyway, with music underway, I would also spend hours and hours yelling weird noises in my microphone, which I would then edit in Audacity to make sound effects. <laughs> Since early April, almost not a single week has gone by without me making and adding new ones to the Dreadful Whispers. All these small details like adding particles to each scene and sound effects and stylish scene transitions is not something a developer really thinks about when starting the project, but boy does it take time. Which is partly why I've been saying for months that the game is really almost done, when in fact it isn't because of all that much needed extra polishing and also because the more I work on this world, the more interesting ideas come to mind. So I've been expanding and expanding and expanding on the game, and it's actually very easy to feel like more is definitely better, and endlessly grind and work. But there comes a time when you just need to say enough is enough. It's a lot better having a short 10 minute game that is fantastic, than one that lasts 20 hours but is complete trash. Oh, and around this time I began receiving fan art, that was amazing, and all of it is ending up in the final game inside of a cool menu. If you want to make some fan art yourself, definitely do so and post it in the Blackthorn Prod Discord server. It's really appreciated. So April and May were two months of adding extra content to the game and lots of polishing. I'm a huge fan of mysterious, well-hidden secrets and easter eggs, so I spent many days adding my own to the Dreadful Whispers. You'll find within this world characters from all of my favourite games. With these secrets added, I also wanted to encourage the player to explore the world more than once, so I made lots of extra levels and dividing paths the player would need to choose from, as well as multiple endings. And then there's a cool collectible system to give the player an indication of how much he's seen. During the month of June, it was clear the game had gone from just a simple, buggy platformer to a complete adventure which I'm really proud of and wanted to sell. My first thought was selling it on itch.io. But then Steam, with its massive audience, came to mind, and I began figuring out how I could upload the Dreadful Whispers on that platform. I thought it would be horribly complex, and it was, but nothing I couldn't handle. I underestimate what I'm capable of, sometimes it's just crucial to trust yourself and go for it. Many people were asking if I could upload both on Steam and itch.io, and the answer to that is yes, I can and I will. 
I'll have a Steam release and a few weeks later I'll upload the game on itch.io. This way my core audience won't be split between the two stores and I'll have a better chance of being featured on Steam. Now the game isn't yet done, there's still lots of work to do before I can truly call the project complete. Then it's all about making a trailer, finishing the Steam uploading process and launching the game. It's amazing how much tougher long projects are to complete. Art that was good a few months ago now looks bad compared to what you make now, so you feel like remaking it all. Or the strong temptation to quit and work on a project that sounds so much more appealing and having messy spaghetti codes, chaotic hierarchies. And then there's the knowledge that the longer you work on the project, the higher the expectations, that's rising pressure. But it feels so nice to spend time on something and to look back at how far you've come and be happy that you didn't quit knowing you improved more than you ever would have had you stayed in your comfort zone. And that will mark the end of this video. If you're hyped for the Dreadful Whispers and want to support Blackthorn Prod, consider buying this epic Dreadful Whispers t-shirts from my merch store. There's also plenty other cool t-shirts, a cute game jam mug and stickers to browse through. And here's a reminder that me and my brother have also made two complete game dev Udemy courses, so if you also want to learn how to make video games, definitely check them out, you'll learn so much. Okay, thanks so much for watching, and an extra big thank you to my patrons for their amazing financial support. Stay tuned for many more game creation videos. Cheers!